So here we are inside of my own mid-journey Discord. On the left, from remix demo down to create video demo, these are all of the parameters we're going to be talking about, and each one will have its own chapter in the video line below. The first thing we're going to look at is remix, and this is the remix parameter. Let's say you just generated an image, and you upscaled it. Now, you have the image that you somewhat like, but let's say you want to change one thing. Let's say I wanted to retain this image, but change all of the students to, let's just say, dogs. The first thing I'm going to need to do is actually activate Remix inside of the Midjourney Discord. You can do this with the command forward slash prefer, space, and then Remix. You'll get this message saying that Remix mode is turned on, and clicking the variation button will now give you a chance to edit your prompt. You can always turn this off by running prefer Remix again. Now you can see that we remix the initial image, changing it to teaching a class of dogs at Harvard. How did we do that? Well, instead of clicking the variation and it just automatically generating, now with Remix turned on, if we click the variation, it opens a prompt. It will open the prompt that we last generated and we can then edit it. You can see that our original prompt, a robot teaching a class of students at Harvard, has now been changed to a robot teaching a class of dogs at Harvard. But remember, as we talked about in the intro, Midjourney does not like extra words. The letter A has the same weight as the word robot, as the same word weight as the word teaching, of, and at. So if we want to better define this, we're going to go ahead and remix it yet again and change it just to simply robot teaching class dogs Harvard, and we get a better render of what we wanted. So that is the remix tool. Again, you turn that on with command forward slash prefer and then remix. Let's go ahead and move on to tile parameters. Now let's go ahead and say you wanted to generate a neon tiger stripes, but this is what it would generate if you just stuck in neon tiger stripes to your imagine prompt. If we want a pattern that can be ever repeating, like this one right here where we can upscale one of these and use it over and over again for say wallpaper or some other layout, we need to add the tile parameter. We simply do that by adding dash dash tile after our prompt. We would then enter neon tiger stripes space dash dash tile. The tile parameter is going to give you an ever repeating pattern of whatever prompt you type in. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the upscale parameter. Now you'll notice that these images are relatively the same. I chose audience sitting, admiration, theater arena, Pixar animation, and this is what it generated. I really liked number four because let's face it that's the only one with a dog, so we upscaled it. And this is what we came up with. This is our generic upscale from Midjourney. But how do we actually make this better? Well, if we had added this simple dash dash up beta to our original image, it would then give us a higher resolution, actually 2048 by 2048 pixel image. You can see that this is much more graphic. Now, if we actually open this image here, you can see that the upscale or the up beta parameter made an image that is way more clear. We can actually look at these images side by side if I turn on my display capture. So we can see these images side by side. On the left, we have the up beta, and on the right, we have your regular up scale. So that is the up beta command, and of course, right here you just add dash dash up beta to any of your prompts and it will use the beta upscaling version now let's go on to the niji setting this right here is a setting specifically for anime slash manga renderings we can see here that the prompt is samurai standing edo era japan housing mountainside stream horse and this is what it gave us. Now, that could very well be a prompt for someone's anime or manga book. But if we wanted it to be more in the style of that, we need to actually tell Midjourney that we want to use dash dash Niji space 4. 
kind of tripped over my words there, Niji space four in our prompt, and the exact same prompt now has this style to it. This looks somewhat of a manga or anime animation, and that's exactly what Niji is for. Alternatively, we can type backslash settings, hit enter, and we can enter Niji through this settings window as well. This will change us from mid-journey version 5 to whatever Niji version we would like to use. And that right there is how you can make any, any of your images seem more like anime. All right, now let's move on to one of my most favorite advanced parameters, and this is chaos. Adding chaos to your image will drastically change the output. As you can see here, we had forgotten to switch from our Niji back to Mid Journey 5. So man standing, forest, dinosaur, UFO, futuristic gave us this. Just another example of how Niji prompts change things. We took out Niji, put it back to version 5 for this chaos demo, and again said man standing, forest, dinosaur, UFO, futuristic, but this time we added chaos 0. This means we're going to use 0 chaos and we're going to follow our prompt very strictly. Next, we're going to actually try it with chaos. Now the higher the chaos between 0 and 100, the less likely it is to follow the guidelines in your prompt. It will of course stylize the image following the words, but chaos gives mid-journey a little bit more leeway or freedom of artistic expression. As you can see, these two variations differ wildly, and all we did was enter a chaos of 100. I absolutely love chaos. Anytime I generate something, I always try and generate another copy with chaos just to see what it comes out with. I mean, this is very, very cool. I especially like the bottom two. Now let's actually go to image to prompt. I was working on a Kindle or a KDP ebook, and as you can see, it was a book about cats. But the one thing I wanted to do is make sure that all of my images felt the same. If your images don't feel the same, they're not really going to correspond, and you can't really tell a story with them. The initial was two kittens sneak out of their cozy home while their owner is busy. Anthropomorphic, cartoon realism, and AR-1212 on version 5. This, you should already know, is just a stylize. It's how heavily you want Midjourney to actually stylize your output or your generation. Now, the next thing we did is we chose the image we liked and we upscaled it. Now from here, to tell a story, I needed every other image that I generated for this book to follow this same style. So, in order to accomplish this, we're going to click on our image, we're going to right click it, and we're going to click on copy link. This will generate a link for us that will give us this image. Once we have that link, we're going to start a new imagine prompt, and the first thing we're going to input is that link. So, forward slash imagine, open your prompt, insert your link, and then begin typing what you want the next prompt to be. We started out, they were inside, we wanted those same two kittens to go outside, and using our initial image as part of our prompt generated an image of relative warmth. That's what I like to call it, relative warmth. You can see that these images are all following the same artistic style, which is exactly what we wanted it to do. Again, the image prompt, all you do, right click the image, copy link, and insert it right after your forward slash imagine and your prompt window has opened. Now let's talk about the remove tool. This is absolutely amazing. Let's say you generate an image, but there's one particular thing in that image that you do not want to show up. In this case, our prompt was man standing, city, overgrown, camera angle wide, and our aspect ratio is that of a YouTube thumbnail. You can also see I added Chaos 10 just to have a little bit of fun with it, and this is what it generated. Now, I really liked these images, but there's one thing. The bridges 
The bridges seemed like an eyesore to me, so I wanted to get the man standing in the city, but I wanted to make sure that whatever mid-journey generated, it did not generate a bridge. So I gave it the same prompt, man standing, city, overgrown, camera angle wide, aspect ratio 16-9, chaos of 10, but I added this part right here. This dash dash no command. This is a removal tool that will tell mid journey, no matter what it generates, you do not want X to come up in your photo. So I dash dash no bridge. I don't want any bridges. And it generated me a man standing near an overgrown city with no bridges. Now, alternatively, the removal tool can also be done using multi prompt. And multi prompt is what we're going to talk about next. But this same prompt that you saw up here with no bridge can also be accomplished with this right here colon colon space bridge colon colon minus 0.5 this minus 0.5 command is the same thing as the dash dash no command and on that let's get to the multi prompt demo this right here is multi prompt let's say we want to generate a cupcake in the style of photorealism well that's great but if we want a cup in a cake Knowing that Midjourney would weight the words in and the letter A as much as it would generate cup and cake, we want to make sure that we generate just a cup and just a cake or a cake in a cup. Therefore, we can use the colons. We can do cup colon space colon space cake in the style of photorealism and that will generate a cake in a cup or a cupcake that is a cup. You can see the handle here. Very many different dif uh, differentiations you can mess around with when using a multi prompt. You can also remove a color like we had the remove tool here. If you wanted say the color blue to no longer be in this image, you would simply go cup colon colon cake colon colon and then let's go blue colon colon minus five this right here is a multi prompt it's going to generate a cup it's going to generate a cake and it's going to make sure that the color blue does not show up but let's get to my number one favorite tool. This is my number one favorite parameter inside Midjourney that nobody is talking about, and that is using Midjourney to create video. That's right, you can use Midjourney to create video. These right here, once opened, which we're gonna show you how to do, will be a moving video. Now, in order to do this, you need to type forward slash settings and make sure you change to Midjourney version three. On version four and five, this does not work, but it does work on Midjourney one, two, and three. Go ahead and type in your prompt, same way, forward slash imagine, but this time, you're gonna go ahead and do dash dash video. And this right here will generate a video for you. You'll notice that I've reacted to this with the envelope. You're gonna go ahead and open your image, or not open your image, but on the top right, you're gonna click add reaction. Now you may have to search for it, but you're gonna go ahead and search for the envelope emoji, this specific emoji right here, and you're gonna to react to your newly generated video with that emoji. That's gonna trigger the Midjourney bot. Up on the very top of your Discord, you will have a new message from the Midjourney bot itself, and it will send you the direct link where you can download your newly generated video. We can even click play here and see this time-lapsed generative video. It is only seven seconds, but messing around with it and then taking it and plugging it into something like Runway will make it extremely powerful.